This is the ZMAR Podcast. Elite Benefits of America helps small and mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs. And now, your host, Butch ZMAR. Welcome back to the ZMAR Podcast. I have Jason Priest with me. We're going to talk about the fatherhood experience and what he's doing for these great men that we call fathers out there. Hey, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Butch. I appreciate you having me on, man. Excited for our hey. interview. Hey, I appreciate you you spending the time. So let let can you give our audience a little bit of background of Jason Priest and then, you know, kind of maybe a little introduction to how you got the uh, the fatherhood experience. Yeah, man. So I'll I'll kind of blend it all together. Uh, you know, reality is this, there's a lot of people that are in my space, and when I say my space, we'll call it the health, the fitness, the weight loss, fat loss space, if you will. Uh, generally speaking, most of those people go through their own journey, uh, and that's how they become passionate about helping others. Uh, I had a similar journey, um, but mine was a really long time ago. And so I'll kind of walk you through that. I had a troubled checkered past as a kid. Um, you know, my dad was not super involved in my life, um, uh, mainly just for sports. I played soccer. I was very athletic, played soccer for 15 years. Um, and I was pretty good at that. And that was, I almost think that he was like, living out his uh, his dream for himself through me, right? Like he mm-hmm. wanted to play baseball and this was his thing for a while. So uh, that was his, my, my parents were divorced at a young age and that was really how, um, you know, how I was raised in a single, single parent household. My mom got remarried uh, when I was like, I don't know, 13 or something. And so that guy was never really my dad. Great dude, but not my dad. And so I didn't really have a, a, a true father figure growing up. Uh, kind of figured life out on my own, went through a really dark path, right? Um, started, uh, got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Uh, I was one of the wrong crowd, I guess. Uh, nobody ever claims that they were part of the wrong crowd. I own that. I own all of my uh, my, my shortcomings. Uh, got into drugs and really went down a dark path and uh, decided that I needed to get out of that dark path uh, very quickly because I, I, uh, I was smart enough to know that I was headed in, in, in the wrong direction. So I decided to, uh, to to randomly, and when I say random, I was going to community college. I heard a couple of dudes talking about nursing school. One of them was an, ENT, an EMT already, and one of them, I forget what he did. Um, they were both talk, talking about starting the next semester. Uh, turns out I did start the next semester, and I never saw either one of those dudes again, but they kind of fueled my, you know, my, uh, my health uh, path, if you will. Uh, got into nursing school, quit all drugs, got my head on straight, uh, graduated from nursing school at 23 and started working in the ICU. Um, as you well know, at 23, most dudes are far from mature. Uh, and I was still, I was still a 17 or 18 year old living in a, a tw- living in a 23 year old uh, body, if you will, mm-hmm. still very immature, um, still, mm-hmm. you know, didn't have my head on straight. My, I met my wife uh, shortly after nursing school. We uh, we got married in 2005. Two months after we got married, my mom, who was one of my best friends, my best friend, uh, died at 49 years of age. I was 25. My wife was 23. And boom, life just smacked me in the face. Uh, I was still fairly fit at this point. Uh, but once my mom died, I went through a very dark depression started drinking beer. I was working night shift in the ICU at the time, uh, 12 hour shifts. I would get off work, go straight to the golf course with a couple buddies, drink beer, eat fast food until I had to go back home, go to sleep and do it again the next day. Clearly this is not a path of health. Uh, I ended up gaining damn near 60 pounds. I was 60 pounds overweight at my heaviest. And I lived like this for several years. My, uh, my wife uh, got accepted to pharmacy school, uh, she's a pharmacist. We moved about three hours from where what we were calling home at the time to some strange small town. Um, and I was lost, lonely, had no clue what I was going to do. My wife was fully entrenched in pharmacy school, as you can imagine. Her schedule was stacked. Um, so I just kept drinking beer, kept eating fast food, uh, kept putting on the weight. I uh, got up to I stopped. Uh, I stopped weighing myself. At 232 pounds, or yeah, 232 pounds, I'm five foot ten. I now weigh 172, so about 60 pounds overweight. Um, and she didn't ride my ride my butt, but she definitely made some hints throughout the years of pharmacy school, which was four years. And uh, finally, the very last year um, of living in that town, when she was about to graduate, about six months left, 
And she said, hey, I, I have this gym. It's free for you because I'm in school. You should try it out. I went. I got addicted to spin class, of all things, which I have not done a spin class in 15 years now. Uh, got addicted to spin class. And nine months later, I was down 60 pounds. And I found myself as a skinny fat uh, individual, which is what happens when you do all cardio, no weights. So then I became very passionate about fitness, started lifting weights, got really into bodybuilding put on a bunch of muscle mass. Uh, we left that strange town, moved back uh, to Dallas, and I started working in corporate wellness doing health coaching. Uh, this is where I really became passionate about uh, coaching and, and really helping people get healthy uh, because I figured out a, a simpler way to do it after going through trying the keto and the Whole30 and all the fad diets and all the cardio. I lost all my weight using cardio. However, there is a much simpler path, and which is what we teach our guys now, and we teach zero cardio. Um, so that's, a, in a nutshell, how I got here to be with you today. I uh, mm -hmm. started my company in 2018 called Dad Bod Health. Uh, still have some coffee mugs with the logo. Uh, it's a dude with, with two dumbbells, and one's a burger, and one's a beer. Uh, my, my focus was going to be to help guys be able to eat burgers and drink beer and lose weight. And I was very successful at that for a while. And then I met my business partner uh, in 2020, shortly after COVID. We decided we wanted to work with only fathers. We were very aligned. And uh, the fatherhood experience was born. Um, and that's that's a, a, a little bit about my journey and, and how I got to be here with you. So, Yeah, well, I mean, definitely a great story in the journey, right? And um, you've had your ups and downs, which you could share with your clients that you've been there, right? And uh, yeah. But I must say that it's got to be uh, quite an, um, you know, a challenge, right, to go from the 230-something and then you're down to 170-something. Yeah. You know, and just from speaking from my own experience, I, you know, this was before COVID. There was a local shop that was doing a six-week program. You lose 15 pounds, you get your money back. And yeah. so, well, I went for six months because it, the money kept rolling, right? But when I got down to 170, right, it was 178. I couldn't maintain it. I was dehydrated. I couldn't sustain it. And so I stopped the program, moved over to their uh, strength training program, and I skyrocketed 20 pounds. And then it just yeah. slowly just keeps creeping. Now, today, you know, uh, I'm back up, I'm getting back up there, but I eat healthier today than ever before, right? Um, yeah. And But still, right, and I'm just using that, you know, like how did, like, and then you said you're still maintaining and you probably teach this to other people, but like the, the biggest hardest thing, because you could lose weight really fast, but how do you just maintain it? Right. Is that taught in the program to help maintain and longevity for these fathers? Yeah, that's our biggest, uh, our biggest focal point is sustainability. And, you know, we, uh, we have some pretty aggressive programs and then we have more of the lifestyle kind of program. And, um, you know, it really depends on which path you want to take the guys that come into our platinum program, they're the guys that want to learn the process and go through exactly what both Zach, Zach was overweight too. He's my business partner. Go mm -hmm. through both uh, what both of us went through, um, figuring out and learning the process along the way. Cause when I got into bodybuilding, you know, like I became meticulous about my macros and my protein and all these things. I pay attention to none of that now. Uh, and I'm in the best shape of my life. I'll be 44 at the end of this month. And I mean, I have a six pack dude and I walk around like this all year long. I am, I, I, when I when I say I'm a health minimalist, I'm truly a health minimalist. I'm in the gym four days a week. I follow a very regimented uh, eating schedule, let's say uh, Monday through Friday. And then, dude, I let loose on the weekends. I eat whatever I want, whenever I want. I am a, a human garbage disposal on the weekends. And I often joke uh, with my business partner that, you know, like you, you've heard of um, carb cycling. I do something more along the lines of calorie cycling. Like I'm in a deficit all week long, knowing that I'm going into the weekend because I'm like, this is family time for me. We we love to eat out on patio. I live in Texas. So patios are a huge thing here. Um, I like a margarita or a cold beer on occasion. And so when we're outdoors and we're enjoying time on our on our own patio or out at a restaurant, like I'm not watching and paying attention to what I, what I order. I'm just not. And so in order to live that life on the weekends, I make a little bit more sacrifice and I'm more regimented during the week. And this is kind of the same methodology that we teach in, in the lifestyle program because most guys want that, right? Like you want to be able to go out with your family and have pizza on the weekend and not worry that you're going to gain five pounds. And uh, that's really what the strategies are behind what we teach, to teach a, a, a little bit around the alcohol and like 
um, why it's important to block that to certain days. And, you know, because when it comes to fat loss and, and sleep, sleep is huge. Most people don't want to talk about sleep, want to talk about diet and exercise. Now, sleep is one of the most crucial components of losing fat and losing fat efficiently. And so when you're not getting good quality of sleep, you're going to be chasing your tail. Uh, I worked with a lot of guys who have high stress, low sleep, and their diet and their nutrition or their nutrition and their fitness is on point. But they lack the pillars of sleep and stress management. We have four pillars that we teach, sleep, stress management, nutrition, fitness. Uh, mindset kind of encompasses it all. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, this is um, this is what we teach our guys because – we don't have repeat clients. We got a guy I posted on uh, on LinkedIn and Facebook today about this guy. Um, his name is Nick. He he, uh, he was five foot eight when he came to us. He was two hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, he hired us like two years ago, dude. Now he's posting selfies all the time, gym pics, and all this. And he's rolling rolling around in a cool one. He's five eight, like I said. He's like one sixty five, one sixty six. Got visible abs. You look at his picture at two fifty. And this guy was a disaster, man. Like you could tell he was hiding in pictures. Um, he was miserable, just swollen all over the place. And so, yeah, that's what that's what our big um, our biggest focus is, is look, man, we're going to help you not only get rid of it, but I'm not going to teach you keto or carnivore or something that you're not going to be able to sustain. I'm going to teach you real nutrition. I'm going to teach you a real path forward so that you can live the live this way the rest of your life. The reality is this, dude, if you can buy in to strength training or resistance training in some form or fashion, it is going to make your fitness journey much simpler. I didn't say easy, but much simpler. And so if you can develop the discipline to get into the gym several times a week and focus mostly on the resistance training component, man, like it's a game changer when it comes to fat loss. And most people get fixated on the cardio the, the cardio piece and they don't really think about that. It's like this sweated out, like, you know, burn as many calories as I can mentality. And they lose sight of the fact that there's so many advantages to working with progressive over overload, doing strength training and having the fat burning process happening in between workouts versus cardio, it shuts off as soon as your heart rates back down. And so um, lots of uh, lots of things we can dive into. But, yeah, that's a, that's the gist of it for sure. And it's also not the lifestyle where you could have a key, uh, piece of cake and then, but you have to fast for 24 hours. Oh after, gosh, yeah. right? <laughs> so I told you this was one of our, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if I call him a competitor because we're not competing with that nonsense, but, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, he gets clients. So, you know, I guess it's a competitor, but you know, these, um, these extreme, uh, diets and uh, these extreme fads out there, let's face it. Like when you take a look around this country, we have a very, uh, a, a massive cultural problem in a massive obesity epidemic. And unfortunately, we're headed in a very wrong direction quickly. Uh, the numbers continue to, to skyrocket. I think we're at 70-something um, 70 percent overweight, 40 percent obese. It is a scary, scary trend to be the fattest and sickest nation in the world, but yet be the most resourceful. I saw a stat the other day that said, uh, we are 4% of the world population. So, and that would make sense. 8 billion people, 350 mm. million people. Uh, I guess that's 4%. Um, mm. But we use 41% of the pharmaceuticals produced in the world. Like, let that sink in. 4% of the population, but 41% of big pharma pushed our way. Now, US and New Zealand are the only ones that are uh, it, where it's legal to advertise big pharma. So I'm sure that plays into it a little bit. But the reality is, is, we're all looking, and me included, we're all looking for the magic pill, the easy fix, the immediate gratification. I can get on my phone and order anything off Amazon or get groceries delivered in 10 minutes or whatever this nonsense is. We all want that with health. And unfortunately, up until this point in history, it's never been it's never been figured out. And there is no magic pill. If you want to cut off your leg to lose 40 pounds, go for it. That's not how it works. And so, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, that's yeah. basically it. Yeah. yeah, that leads into another topic uh, we were going to talk about where, yeah, there, even though you, you you call it a epidemic or, you know, just pandemic, if you want to call it. Yeah, but, there you, go. you know, like, yeah, and, and you have content on your website that, you know, we talk about it became a normalcy, right? And so, uh, and, and not, I'm not bringing this up for politics but like during covid sure. like mass became a normal thing right like and yeah. all of a sudden things became normal uh, but the you know like what's the new normal right well and i guess when it comes to health you know the it's interesting because you could sit there at a grocery store or a mall and watch people walk by and the normal is not the normal there was the 
the meme that was going around, I know, on Facebook for a while where they had two pitchers and they had one of these guys uh, like downtown Chicago in suits, um, super thin. You could see their their the 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 curvature of the neck, you know, like healthy people. Yeah. And then they had this other picture where people were big necks, big shirts, big everything. And like what happened between the last, you know, what, 50, 60, 70 years. Yeah. Right. So a lot has changed. But I think like your your content as shared, and this is probably what you have in your program where it, it's it's normal. Right. Normal. Like if you hung around with all your normal people um you know if they're all healthy you'd be a natural tendency to gravitate that way and i yeah. think you i don't know if we were recording yet but you know you said you become the average of the group that you hang out with right yeah, and yeah. So, you know you uh you're spot on man and, and environment um and association is everything right and so like you just said that the the average of the five people you spend the most time with or whatever the saying yeah, is yeah. if you you know, and, and I'll just say this from I, I, I talked about my drug history when I was in my teens. Mm -hmm. When you only associate with those type of people, like what else are you going to do? So like as a mm -hmm. fit guy right now, right, if mm -hmm. I went and started, if I went out and sought out in the community a, a, a guy's group to be a part of and mm -hmm. I was really lonely, right, and, and I didn't have anybody and I was like, you know what, I just need to go get some dude talk in. Yeah, and yeah. I go and I find a coffee shop. And I find five fat dudes, and I'll just call it what it is, five guys who are obese, and we start spending more and more time together. Well, like, generally speaking, I'm going to let, I'm going to start to let my foot off the gas. I'm going to start doing more things that they're doing. And so I can't overemphasize the importance of getting around people that you want to be more like, right? And it's not necessarily an envy or a jealousy thing, but like, Fitness minded people, people that are focused on their health and like fitness is a priority for them. They're some of the most outgoing people and they're some of the least, the, the, the least critical people, right? Like I don't, I don't go to the gym and see obese people and like snicker and make fun of them. I'm like cheering them on in my head. I'm like, yeah, I'll come be part of our crowd because I used to be like you, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think like that, you know, when you you talk about normalcy, you know, you men mentioned the mask thing, you know, mm. nowadays there, there's still some people wearing those things. Mm. But like I'm in Texas and I don't see any fit people wearing masks. Right? <laughs> like they mm -hmm. they know that they don't need that they, they, they can breathe raw air and they're going to be OK. Right. And so when you start thinking about, uh, you know, guilt by association, um, when you say normalcy, I saw somebody on Twitter. Uh, he, this guy, had gone to uh, to Europe and he was sharing a story. Like he said, man, his, his tweet was something around the line. I don't know if they call them tweets anymore, but post was something along the lines of, you know, one of the most depressing things is always when I get off the airplane coming back into America and seeing all the obese people shuffle through the airport because. You go to the mall or any large gathering, and yeah, that's all you're going to see is like again the 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 obesity rate now is close, like forty percent. Overweight is like seventy. So that tells you that you just take a look around. I go to the grocery store right now. And what am I going to see mostly? Overweight people. You don't come across like being fit now is like you're you're in the minority. And so part of our angle with our guys is like, man, if you want to rise above and like lead by example and influence others you're going to have to get used to doing hard work, right? Like doing, you know, doing hard work when you don't want to do hard work. And that's just the, the bottom line is if you want to continue to look for the magic pill or the, the easy fix, you're going to continue to meet resistance in your life because it doesn't exist. And so it's very easy to get mixed up with, you know, like most people's family members are obese. I'll, I'll be, I'll use mine. And for example, yeah. I'm in, uh, in San Antonio with my, my, most of my wife's family's here. And like, dude, we're not a fit family. Like no yeah. one's over here like doing pull-ups on Thanksgiving. I mean, like I'm my, my wife and I are like the fit ones. There's one or two others that are not super overweight. And like, that's just how, that's just how it is. And it's sad. It's like no knock on them, but that's where our, that's where our culture is. We have fallen yeah. so far as a society and as a culture. Um, mm -hmm. It is going to take a massive, uh, a massive swing to get, back to where we need to be for the health mm -hmm. of our country. And it takes strong men leading that charge. Speaking of strong men, right. I'm going to lead to, you know, the guys that you work with um, and you refer to them as, as your guys, but 
he took a niche into those who are dads, right? Those who are yep. a father and talking about normalcy, right? So the the dads are out there making the sacrifices, right? They're out there, you know, striving all day long, making the money so that the kids could grow up, maybe mom yep. to stay home, right? There's a lot of burden that's on their shoulders. And then after work, they're flying. So around, you know, like you had mentioned, you know, eating fast food uh, all the time, going to the golf yep. course. Well, dad's trying to do that. And maybe they're going to the golf course too, but but they're also trying to show for all these kids around, do yeah. all these activities, and they don't have time to cook, they don't have time to prepare, and so, or at least they think, right? One of the biggest hurdles is time, right? And you guys address that in your program. Yeah. And so, I guess I'm curious on how did you move towards uh, dealing, working with just fathers, right, or dads out there that want to make a difference, and then I guess what kind of success have you had by narrowing that niche down to just the dads? That's a good question. And I'll tell you this. I think, you know, I, I think one of the things that I'm most grateful for is that I went through my my weight loss journey before I became a dad. Uh, my wife and I were married for 10 years before we had our first son. And so I'm a quote unquote older dad. I mentioned I'm going to be 44 this year. Mm-hmm. And I have an eight year old and a three year old. And a three year old keeps me young. Right. And so I love it. I love being a dad at this age. And I'm glad I didn't have him when I was 25 because. Uh, they'd be gone now, you know, and so right. uh, I'm soaking it up. And so I think some of the some of the insight that I have of being able to maintain my level of fitness while doing the chauffeuring the kids around because my wife, like I work from home, so I do most of the taxing. My wife is a pharmacist; she works a regular like nine to five, eight to five kind of deal. And you know, with that being said, I'm the one that takes we, my my kids go to Catholic school. I'm the one that takes them to, to school in the morning. I went to church. With, I went to mass this morning to see my son. You know, he had a little line in mass. Um, and so I'm the one doing the practices and all that. And so if I can stay in great shape, in the best shape of my life, at 44 or almost 44 with two young kids at home, there's no reason why the guys that we're working with can't start to make progress and get into a better spot because I've already mastered it. I'm not struggling through it right now. I've already mastered the concept. And so um, niching down to dads uh, was really, you know, I have two kids. Uh, My business partner has two kids. Dads are who we relate most with, right? Like I, I've worked with women in the past and uh, they're just a different animal. Uh, I want to go back to something that you said um, about, you know, the, the, the women, you know, the dad going off to work and the woman being at home. That's another massive cultural issue that we have is that more and more women are in the workplace. And so you don't have that, you know, you, you don't have that nuclear family that you once had. And that's why we're seeing a lot of the problems. Um, childhood obesity is on the rise because if parents are fat, Kids are going to be fat, and that's just the way that it goes. That's normalcy. So, yeah, there's your normalcy, right? And so, right. you know, it, it's um, rarely do you see a, a fit family with one fat kid, right? Mm-hmm. It's it, it doesn't. I, I've seen it like once or twice uh, since we moved here, and it's just not that common. And, and that kid mm-hmm. might have other challenges. You know, might be a, a video game addict, and the kid parent. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of factors that come into play there. Sure. But with that said, uh, the success that we have is really, you know, I think. I think from our standpoint, like we, we changed the structure of our programs, uh, you know, I, I don't know, six months ago or so. And it's just been a, a massive help to our guys because now we, we used to run mostly just a group program and now we're, we're running small. And when I say group, there'd be like 30 or 40 guys on our, our calls. And now we'll, we do, we take no more than five in a group and we, me and Zach personally meet with them every single week. So It's a Zoom call with three to five dudes and we're getting deep, you know, and they build that bond with each other, but they see that we're going through it and we're in the trenches with them. If they, if they're at the gym and they post a picture or something like that, Zach and I are doing the same thing in our little messenger pod, right? Like we create a little messenger chat. We're all in there together. So if they have questions or problems that come up during the week before their call, they can get a hold of us. Um, You know, but we're seeing them face to face every week. And so that level of accountability also keeps us accountable. I'm not going to let my foot off the gas and skip the gym for two weeks, which would never happen. But I'm not going to do that knowing that I've got guys that are looking at me as leadership to say, hey, man, like I'm here at the gym and it sucks. I don't love it every time I'm here, but I'm still here. Like when we get off this call today, I'm going to the gym to do legs. 
does anybody get super, I guess there's a few, a few select individuals who get excited about legs, but like going and putting weight on your back and doing squats, heavy squats is you're choosing discomfort in this day and age, in this modern, modern day and age, you have to choose discomfort. We talked about immediate gratification and all these mm-hmm. things being right at our fingertips now and health just isn't that way. And so seeing us choose hard when we don't want to do hard uh, inspires them to do the same thing. And then we start to build them up over time with their mindset, teaching them the ins and outs of nutrition. Uh, we, we often tell them uh, you can have anything you want. You just can't have everything you want. And so, you know, eating five slices of pizza on a Tuesday night when you're in, in the mix of the week is probably not a good idea. And so, you know, this is uh, it's uh, pick and choose your battles. But I think in terms of success, it's probably what, you know, we're very um, we're very compassionate to the guys who show up and do the work. We have zero compassion for guys who sign up with us and then disappear because they think they put a Band-Aid on our on, on their problem. Uh, that is not why we do what we do. And so we see very few of those these days because of the way that we've changed our program. If we meet you on Zoom every week and you don't show up, we're going to call you on it, dude, because that's why you signed up with us mm-hmm. is to help have us help you change your life. And mm-hmm. there's no more precious asset than your health when it comes to life. And I think we can both agree on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. And so it sounds a lot when you're walking through that, uh, they sound like gym rats, right? Or what I call gym rats, right? The guys yep. that spend a lot of time there and they're like, yeah, I went to the gym and they have zero results. Um, yeah, and dude. I there. see those guys all the time. I, I yeah. There's guys at my gym right now that I see that have been on the elliptical. They're on the same elliptical 45 minutes or an hour every time I go there. And they look the same for the last year, two years, three years. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, I don't understand how you can continue to show up here because I'm showing up to the same gym and I certainly don't look like you. My workouts are no more than 30 minutes. I am in the gym four times a week for 25 to 30 minutes each time. And that is it. All I do is weights. My cardio is walking my little crazy little Boston Terrier five times a week for 15 minutes in the morning because he pesters me unless he gets his walk. Right. And that is it. It's built into my lifestyle. I don't go out of my way to do cardio because I don't need the cardio. And so I think, um, you know, there's, there's a, there's so many ways to skin a cat, but like when you're looking for simplicity, um, I always say that the, you know, the short, the only shortcut in life is finding someone who's done it already and learning from their, their experience. And that's business coaching, that's health coaching and fitness coaching, that's mindset coaching, whatever. All you're doing is leveraging the tools of somebody who's done it and been through the trenches and put in the work so that you can mm-hmm. hopefully learn from their mistakes and shortcut your process, which is, you know, what we're trying to do. So, so let's highlight the, your program, the experience right, a little bit. So somebody goes, lands on your website and they're willing to, they're looking at the next steps. What, what can they expect in the program? Just the high level 50,000 yeah. foot overview. What, what do they expect out of the program? I will tell you that they can expect results because we put our money where our mouth is. If we don't get you results, then we continue to work with you for free, man. Like that's, that's how, uh, that's how committed we are to your results. But there's, there's a commitment part of that, right? Like if you, you got to show up each week and I'm not saying if you're sick, you can't miss a workout. Like that's fine. We are human beings. We're not robots, but like if you're the guy that skips four calls in a row, well, I don't have, you have no, no accountability. You're, you're failing yourself. And so what you can expect is this to learn a, very sustainable way of living, like to to simplify it as much as possible. Um, We place a large emphasis on support and accountability. And so with our guys, with, um, you know, especially with our top two programs, our gold and our platinum program, you're going to see us every single week on your private call. You also have a open office hour call that you can attend on Monday morning if you're in a funk to come get questions answered, bounce ideas, whatever, get additional help. And then we have a group class, which is the class that I taught um, right before our call today, which is for everybody in our program. So you essentially could do three calls a week. If you can't get your crap together three times a week and you're there to truly change your life, then you're doing something way wrong, right? Our success rate is extremely high. We've only had to use our guarantee one time and it was because the guy was lying about his nutrition. He was a shady client, probably should have never brought him on. Um, but anyway, so what you can expect is compassion, results-driven mentality, but we're going to hold your feet to the fire, man. Like 
We're not there to be your friend. You know, a lot of our clients, we, we do some in-person retreats. We've got one coming up in Vegas at the end of the month. Um, we do some of them here in Texas. And that's really a mindset get together. We're going deep and like really helping you move forward and put some of the struggles in the past behind you for good. Um, but you can expect maximum support, high level coaching where we're teaching you everything that you need, all the nuances about health and fitness, but really teaching you and placing an emphasis on the simplest path forward so that you're not spending, you heard my gym time, two hours a week. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't want you in the gym four or five hours a week. I don't want you spending six hours on a Sunday doing meal prep. I'm teaching you a way, a path forward as a dad, as a busy dad who's juggling family, career, all those things that we juggle. Being a dad is hard. It's also the best job in the world, but it's one of the hardest jobs in the world. And if you truly want to live up to your potential as a father, that means you got to lead by example. And so we're getting into your head from our standpoint and saying, hey, look, man, like we know it's hard because we do it every week and mm -hmm. you can too. Um, we place a large amount of belief in our guys because we know it's possible. All you got to do is show up and put in the work. And so we cover it all, man. We have a full educational curriculum that you get access to. Uh, we have our Facebook group, which is really not a super popular thing now that we changed our uh, changed our program structure because we see our guys on a Zoom call every week. They all have a little private messenger pod with us. They all text us like we're Johnny on the spot. If you're at, you know, on a Tuesday and you, you forget your lunch. Uh, and you got Chick-fil-A or Chipotle, you can come ask us and we're going to tell you, hey, man, we recommend this uh, to make your life simple so that you're not you, we're, we're trying to take as much of the guesswork as we possibly can out of it. Um, simplicity is what we're looking for so that you can get results, feel a heck of a lot better and show up and be the role model and the leader that your family needs and deserves. All right. That all, all sounds awesome. So if somebody listening to this podcast that wants to sign up or get more information, what's the best way to reach out to you? I mean, you can go on our website and uh, there's there's multiple. You can sh uh, shoot us a messenger. We have a little chat bot that will answer you there. Uh, and then our team takes over the messaging. Uh, there's a form you can complete on the actual website. Uh, we actually have a phone number. I can't. I don't have it memorized, but I can give you the phone number too. Because um, mm -hmm. the reality is, is texting is is where everybody, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to miss a text message, right? And so mm -hmm. for us, like the easier it is for um, the easier it is for somebody to get a hold of us, the the better chances are that they can come into our world and at least get some of the value that we have to offer them. We have a free guide that we give out to guys. It's a, we used to have a landing page. We don't anymore. Um, is it, it, we changed all of our software. And so it's one of those things that's kind of on the, on the list of things to do. Um, but I can give you the link and put it in the show notes for guys. It's, yep. You don't even have to opt in. It's just a Google link uh, to hopefully yep. go give you some, some value um, we're not big opt-in guys, man. Like you see the value. If you love what you have to love the, what we have to say, come get in our world and, and let us help you and let us show you a better way. And so, uh, those are the main things. I think our, our, our phone number is also on the website. Yeah. It's on the website. If you go to the bottom of the, uh, any of the pages. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, so the you, phone yeah. number for the, for the ones listening to this, it's eight, three, zero, seven, four, five, four, five, eight, five. There it's you go. The fatherhood experience.com. We'll put them in the show notes. So they can go. reach out to you. And then uh, I'd love to have you back at some point. We'll get some updates, maybe some testimonials, how things are going in your world, uh, especially with the world of dad. So, hey, Jason, this has definitely been great. I appreciate all the time and the uh, words of wisdom that you put, especially the inspiring dads out there. Hey, I appreciate you having me on, man. This was fun. And I'll tell you this, I'll end with this. We are not, we are a, we are a small company by design. Um, we stopped trying to do the big group thing. And because we we build better relationships when we work personally with our guys. And so if you text us, like we, I, I or Zach will personally respond to every text. We are not handing you to off to anybody. Uh, and I think that's the, the additional level of care that we can provide that some of these bigger, you know, PDF in a box companies uh, mm -hmm. can't provide. And that's what, that's what really, I think truly separates us. So thanks for I, having me on.